So your lab is actually just like this, exactly the same way, except you're going to have to physically do some of this stuff when you actually get in the lab. Um, so first off, the first question is this, and I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Uh, it says, Right here, what is the mass of H2O? Okay, and they even give you a hint right here. The mass of the flash stopper with water minus the flask of the uh, minus the mass of the flask and stopper. So you read up here, Jane Doe, obviously that's original, uh, had an Erlenmeyer flask with a stopper. She found the mass of the Erlenmeyer flask to, and stopper to be 35.68. After filling the flask to the top with H2O and stoppering it, she found the mass to be 65.94. How do we get the mass of the water inside the flask? Subtract. And what'd you get? 30.26. Okay. And I, I wrote grams twice in the G's there. I'm sorry. It's a habit. Uh, anyway, so you got that. So you subtract these two. Good job. Now, using the density of water, and they even give it to you right here, just like in the notes yesterday, calculate the volume of density, or I'm sorry, calculate the volume of the flask using the density formula. And they give it to you right here, and they rearrange it to solve for volume that you're looking for. You need the mass of the water, which you just found, and the density of water, which is right here. So you take this divided by that, excuse me, and you should get your answer, which was very close to the other one. What'd y'all get? 30.35. And that's in milliliters. Oh, thanks. Divided by what? Divided by the density. Right there. Um, so down here, I'm going to scoot up a little bit. Number three says, what is the mass of the unknown liquid? Now, they basically said that she goes back taking the same flask. Now, keep this in mind. It's the same flask. She already has the mass of that flask. She emptied it, dried it, filled it with the unknown liquid, and you are going to have an unknown liquid, to determine its unknown density. She obtained the mass of the flask and stopper with the unknown and found it to be 56.59. Find the density of the unknown liquid. Now, it's kind of jumping ahead. You're going to have to do one step before you find the density. You've got to find the mass of the unknown liquid first. So they tell you here, the mass of the flask stoppered with unknown, which was right here, minus the, flask, uh, uh, the mass of the flask and stopper. That's all the way back from up here. So there, she's using the same flask, so that mass is going to be the same. So this is where it gets a little tricky. You're going to have to extrapolate through previous paragraphs. If you haven't noticed, if you messed up up here earlier, it's going to mess you up down here. That's chemistry. Uh, so anyway, when you subtract uh, the 35.68 and the uh, 56.59, what'd you get? 20. I got 91. Y'all got 31? 91? Okay. Uh, Okay, so, so far so good. Now, number four, what is the density of the unknown liquid? Well, you have the mass, okay? So back up here, you have the mass. We don't know the density, so you're not gonna use this formula. You're gonna use this one. So mass, and you need volume. So you're like, well, uh, how do I know the volume of the flask? Well, you've already found it. Number two, the volume of the flask was 30.35. Y'all see that? Oh, so you got to use your answers to actually answer another question. So it's like a puzzle. Yeah. So you have the mass, which was the 20.91 that you got up here. And you also have the volume of the flask, because she's using the same flask again, 30.35. And so you divide the two. This is where it, you have to actually you know, visualize it. But in lab, y'all are actually going to see these things instead of having to mentally try it up here. Anyway, so you take 20.91 divided by this. It should be less than 1. 0.69. And some of y'all might have got past another decimal. I will go ahead and tell y'all in this class, if you give me at least two decimal places or two whole digits past the decimal, you've rounded to the right place. Because I'm not going to... We could do sig figs, but then people usually end up rounding two decimals anyway. Just, yeah. Now, some people, um, if you're ever unsure, you can go four decimal places in this class because typically we won't go past that. Or you can put it in scientific notation, which we'll talk about more tomorrow. Um, there's only too much we can do in a day. Number five, find the mask of the water in the flask. So, okay, this is what she did. Now she emptied the flask, dried it again, 
using the same flask, placed a few pieces of metal in the flask. She wanted to determine the density of the solid. So she obtained the mass of the flask and stopper with the metal inside. Okay, found that to be 155.67 grams. Okay, uh, she then fills the flask and the metal to the top with water and obtains the mass of that. It is this number. So they say find the mass of the water in the flask. Now why should we even care about the mass of the water in the flask if we're trying to find the density of the metal? You're going to have to do some subtracting. It's a process of going backwards. Uh, do also realize, why are we filling it full of water? Well, water takes up what in the flask? The space, which is the volume. So if the metal's in there, the metal has been submerged and it's displaced some of that water. And so we're going to take the mass of the water, convert that to volume, and that will tell us the volume of the metal. That's basically what's going on these next steps, but uh, we'll, yeah, let's actually go through it. Uh, find the mass of the water in the flask. Well, the mass of the flask and stopper with the metal minus the mass of the flask and the stopper with the metal. God, this is a blah, 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 blah. Uh, will give you the mass of the water. So basically she's saying, take this value, right now this value right here, because it's with the water, and uh, subtract it. So when you subtract these two values, uh, so you got this value, which is filled with water, and this is the metal with no water. You subtract the two, that's just going to give you the mass of the water that's in the flask, right? It's a lot of objects, but it does work out. So basically, this minus this, you get what? Yeah. Okay, number six. Calculate the volume of the water uh, <laughs> via the rearranged density equation. Okay, so the rearranged density equation they're talking about is up here. You're doing the same process over again. You need the mass of the water, which you just found. What's the density of water? Well, you did that way up here. Boom, right there. So typically, 17.28 divided by the 0 0.9970, which should give you around 17.33 milliliters. Now, you will end up getting the, um, the reason why I'm doing this, because in lab, you can reference back to this uh, because y'all are doing actually everything in the same order, but you're actually doing it with real objects. Okay, now some of this you got to kind of extrapolate. So they do ask you this right here. Jane realizes the volume of the water is less than that, the volume of the flask. <gasps> Gasp. Uh, as you can see right here, so about this volume versus this volume. Can I put them both on the same table? There you go. Do, 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 do. So this is what it was completely filled with water, but this is what it was when the metal was in there. So how do you find the volume of the metal? There you go, you subtract. So she asked right here, what uh, occupies the rest of the volume of the flask? Well, the only other thing in there besides water is the metal. And it says calculate the volume of the metal, just like I said. This is the displaced volume, which should be less because you put the, the metal in there. This is without metal. When you subtract the two, you get the volume of the metal. Just like number four on your homework. But it was a little bit backwards. So what'd you get? 13.02 .02 milliliters. All right, last but not least, let's do the density of the metal. Well, density of metal is mass over volume. So you just found the uh, volume of the metal. The mass of the uh, metal, where's that at? Really? You're going to do uh, one of these? Okay, this is the hard part. They y'all didn't do an intermediate step here to actually get the mass of the metal. But how would you find it? Well, you have the mass of the flash stoppered with the metal. That's right here. Okay, 155.67. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Where's the mass of the empty flash? Nothing in it. up here. Oh no, we have to go back to the beginning? Yes. So you subtract the two. 
Oh, I po pointed to the right number just now. Subtract the two, you should get, I believe, like 119.99. So that is your mass of the metal. Then you take that value divided by that value, and you get, you got six? I got 9.22. My handwriting is horrible. <laughs>